the economics of the imperfect market process is going to be a lecture within this kind of context of behavioral economics, but it kind of slant on behavioral economics, seeing that there could still be coordination even when we question the cognitive abilities of individuals as behavioral economics does. What we're really going to do here in this lecture series is we're going to break down a famous article by Armin Alchin. So the paper we're going to look at in this lecture series is Armin Alchin's 1950 paper from the Journal of Political Economy called Uncertainty, Evolution, and Economic Theory. Each little mini lecture will kind of break down one of the sections from this paper, put them all together. We've read the paper, we've talked about the ideas, and we can get a sense of how Armin Alchin in this paper talks about the economic uh, economics of the imperfect market process and how we have growth and we get success even with limited cognitive abilities or error that happens within the market system. Alchin is a true economist economist. There's a true story of his work being confiscated and destroyed as a threat to national security when he correctly predicted in advance some U.S. nuclear secrets during the Cold War by tracking the price movements of publicly available financial data. He identified lithium as the key fissile fuel while that information was still classified. Right? So he writes this paper and the uh, United States says, whoa, wait a minute, and tracks this down, destroys his work, uh, and confiscates it and everything. Alchin is this economist economist. He's using price signals and incentives and talking about core basic ideas within economics. He wrote relatively few papers for a famous economist, but almost all of them had a very large impact on the field. Foremost in his work was his work on property rights, but he also helped pioneer the ideas of the second law of demand and what is sometimes referred to as the third law of demand or the Elchin Allen effect or shipping the good apples out. He passed away in 2013 and is seen by many as having been unfortunately snubbed by the Nobel Committee. He's truly a noteworthy economist. Section one of uncertainty, evolution, and economic theory really gets at this idea that profit maximization is not a guide to action. What does Elchin mean by this? Well, there's so much uncertainty that nobody can really do simple optimization calculations. Alchin points to the work of Tintner, who talks about there being uncertainty from two different sources. And he says, listen, we have imperfect foresight. There's uncertainty everywhere. There's a human inability to solve complex problems, such even when there's an optimum that is definable, right? So this uncertainty comes from these two sources, from our imperfect foresight and from our inability to solve even if the optimum is definable in some way, right? Under uncertainty, each action then, according to Tintner, would be identified with a distribution of potential outcomes and not a unique outcome. So what does all of this mean for us? It means that when we are looking at a firm or individuals and they're optimizing, and we have uncertainty as part of the economic problem, we are selecting a distribution that is preferable, not a specific particular outcome. Okay, so if we live in a world with uncertainty, which Alchin is gonna stress, and we're picking distributions, well, how do we talk about profit maximization and optimizing profits for a firm you know, making these decisions? Alchin argues that picking an optimum distribution would be meaningless, right? So from Tintner's argument, what does that mean to select a distribution that is preferable? How do we maximize the distribution? Do we pick the distribution that gives us the highest mean, the highest median, that avoids massive error, that more so matches Herbert Simon's bounded rationality and satisficing? or somehow ties into you know, some other framework for making choices such as uh, prospect theory from behavioral economics? What do we even mean when we say that we're picking an optimum distribution? When uncertainty exists, 
there's nobody can really do these simple optimization problems. So profit maximization, when we think about this, is not a guide to action for firms. The only way to make profit maximization meaningful is by postulating certainty in the first place. But the real world is not filled with certainty. Profit maximization is not a pure and simple guide for firm behavior.